Hello everybody, and welcome to another Puzzle Challenge video with ChessUniversity.com. Uh, on the screen before you is the solution to, or is about to be the solution to yesterday's Puzzle Challenge, where we said it was white to play and checkmate in three moves. So, if you haven't solved it already and you'd like to, uh, make sure you pause the video now because I'm going to go through the solution. Uh, this one begins with the check, uh, as you might expect, and the correct check to begin with is Rook H8. After this, black only has one legal move, they have to go here. And now it's just important to find the follow-up check. Um, there's a lot of things that are maybe tempting here, like rook g8, but uh, the correct way to continue is queen e6, because this forces the king to go back up towards the rook, upon which queen g8 delivers a nice checkmate. Bishop taking away the f6 square. So that's the mate we were looking for. And, um, I mean, there's, there's ways to go wrong here, but that's the most efficient way to checkmate. So hopefully you guys saw that one. And uh, now we're going to move on to our new puzzle for the day, which is this one. And here it is actually black to play and equalize, more or less. So black to play and find the best move. And, um, yeah, so this came from a game I played. I was actually playing blindfold as white against a sort of lower-leveled version of Stockfish. Uh, I was playing online. And... Um, yeah, basically white had been better for most of the game because Stockfish does really silly things when you water it down uh, in terms of the opening and also like in terms of the middle game. Um, but here it had spotted most of what was a pretty nice combination to uh, to get really good counterplay that I'd obviously overlooked as white because I was blindfolded and because I'm terrible. But uh, yeah, let's quickly look how the game developed up to this point. And uh, when you solve that, uh, if you want to give your solution, uh, make sure you head over to the link in the YouTube video description. Uh, if you want credit uh, to, on your chessuniversity.com account. So, yeah. All right, so this game began as a Scandi. This is one of those gambit lines where black's giving up a pawn very early to try to activate their pieces. White is accepting the gambit. And after e4, queen e2. Otherwise, the knight would have to move from f3. Uh, it goes without saying, I do not recommend doing this with black. Maybe in blitz or bullet, but... Yeah, besides that, not, not exactly a recommended approach. Queen e7. Knight to d4, putting pressure on c6. So bishop d7 takes and takes. So black has a bishop pair, but black's also down a pawn. And uh, if they're not careful, this one on e4 is also pretty loose. So knight c3, knight to f6, castles, queen to e5. Knight back to f3, exploiting the fact that the e4 pawn is pinned to the queen, which is not protected on e5. The queen went back to e7. I mean, it could have gone to other squares, but it doesn't change too much. I would, in general, prefer to keep this bishop open, so blocking it again doesn't make a lot of sense. But Knight g5 played by white. He's trying to win the pawn. And now h6, which just encourages white to take. And basically white's out of the opening with two extra pawns. So now you get to watch how it slowly unravels throughout the course of the game. I'm just kidding. It's actually mostly good, decent quality. I mean, it's not, nothing amazing from white, but white's pretty solid for most of the game uh, until the very, very end when we get to the tactic. So f5, attacks the knight, knight c3 back, bishop b4. I don't want to spend a terrible amount of time on any of these moves because it is quite a long game. And a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory, like something's being attacked, something's being defended. So occupying an open file. I played b3 earlier just to blunt the b file and have a place to put my bishop that makes sense. Though it's not actually clear the long diagonal is the best. It, it seems reasonable. Rook e8, g3. Mm, this has some, some negative implications, obviously. If, if ever the black bishop gets on the uh, long diagonal along the light squares, that could be a potential weakness that I have to be worried about later. G3. Um, yeah, but for the moment, it kind of does what I needed to. It gives my king some lift. I have king g2, king f1 options, just kind of staying flexible. Okay, the rook went back to b8 for reasons I don't understand. Uh, and then rook a d1, h5. And yeah, this is kind of annoying because now there's these ideas also I didn't mention a moment ago of playing for these different hooks, uh, ways of exposing this hook on g3. So h4 to open up the h file could be annoying. So, yeah, there's definitely counterplay ideas against this pawn structure by pushing h4 or f4. So white goes d4 now. I think 
I mean, this was played a little while ago, easily over a year ago. Um, looking at this position now, I don't know why I didn't play just h4 as white, because this seems like the simplest, just like kills any counterplay right away. And if f4, probably can just go knight e4 here and protect g3 this way. And it seems to keep the position a little bit more under control than what happened in the game. It's obviously also attacking the, the bishop. So yeah, d4, probably a very inaccurate move. Right, h4 by black. Knight to e2, protecting g3. Um, yeah, just over defense, basically. So takes, takes. Bishop to c7. And now I was sort of happy with this maneuver. Bishop c1, trying eventually to put the bishop on f4 and try to neutralize this one. Bishop a5, bishop d2, bishop back, and h4. h4 is just trying to hold back on the g5 move, because otherwise g5, f4 could be an idea. Bishop b7 played, attacking the pawn on a3, so a4 was played to stop that. Bishop to f6, and now bishop to f4. Not only hitting the rook, but again, opening up the rook on d1, so it protects this again. So just trying to get all the pieces back into play. And this is where white should have been a little bit more aware of what was going on. Because the move rook g8 is pretty clearly looking to play g5 in the near future. And so it would have been prudent for white to get the king off of the g file. So move like king f2, or even just king g2 actually. You can stay on the g file, but making sure that um, this g3 pawn is extra protected and there's no like rook h3 or doubling and then rook h2 ideas. This way white also has this option after the h file opens to neutralize the rooks that might try to invade. So that would have been a good prophylactic move. Anyway, g5 takes, 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 takes. Notice now that this pawn is hanging, so again, it would have been nice to have king f2 or king g2 already played, but, you know, alas. And here, white starts to go horribly wrong. Um, white's still totally fine if knight e2 is played, for example, just or just a move that protects this pawn, but knight e2 is very solid. Um, and then if black tries to go for doubling, which is probably the most logical thing they could do, there's really no threat here. So like, for example, if here, they can give a check, but then king f3 and nothing's happening. This is protected. The second rank is sort of blocked for the moment. It's still a little bit awkward for, for white to like untangle completely, um, but black's not really doing anything super scary here. So rook e3 on the other hand uh, is not so great because now there's multiple things that are loose in white's position. Like the c2 pawn is exposed along the second rank. If the rook is ever shaken, the knight on c3 is still undefended. Um, this is only defended because the knight's on c3. Like, everything's just barely held together, and there's some things that aren't defended at all. Um, so rook e3 was not the way to protect the, the pawn. All right. Rook g to h5. Now rook to e2 back. Yeah, very inconsistent. Like, why play rook e3 and then rook e2? Um, I can actually remember what I was thinking here as white. I think my point was that I obviously missed black's tactical resource. Um, but what I think of what I was calculating was if they go for the series of checks, I was just trying to not lose the C2 pawn. So like here, here, sorry, other rook in, and king e This is what I remember calculating. And I saw that, okay, like if he takes here, this one's protected, and now he can't take my C2 pawn, so life's great. White's king's active in the end game, two pawns up, etc. cetera. Uh, however, that's not forced by any means. And after rook e2, the much stronger move was found by the computer, f4. Yeah, very nice idea. So just including the bishop into the game, and now there's this idea of bishop g4. Rook f2 now to pin the, uh, the pawn to the black king. Rook h1. King g2. And the sick part is I saw all this, as soon as the computer played f4, I remember I was blindfolded and I was like, oh shoot, I've missed f4. And then I saw like the sequence that was coming and then I was like really surprised when the computer didn't play it, the whole thing out. Um, but then again, it, it's a watered down version, so like that'll happen sometimes. So king f3, and here's our critical moment uh, where it is. Black to play and equalize, completely equalize. Probably be slightly more comfortable in some sense, just because of the practical pressure they have. So. Yeah, see what you would do here if you had black. And uh, yeah, put your uh, your comments on the official post on chessuniversity.com and you can get reward points. We'll post the solution tomorrow, mid-afternoon, U.S. Central Time. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see everyone tomorrow.